Hey everyone, I'm Alex, and welcome to this complete beginner's guide to Loop Hero. In this guide, I'll be going through the absolute fundamentals of everything you need to know to get started in Loop Hero. In fact, I'll even be doing a complete beginner's run after uh, my kind of introduction part, so be sure to stay tuned for the entire thing. You're going to learn a ton about this absolutely fantastic game. Let's get started. The first thing you got to do is uh, actually kind of understand where you're going. So we're going to start with kind of like a little more feature complete game here because I want you to see what you're building towards and what the overall game mechanics are. First of all, uh, what you're going to be doing here is if you go to the build command here, you'll notice that there is a ton of buildings available to build. And I've been playing this game for like 15, 20 hours already, and I haven't even built everything yet, which is quite impressive to give you an idea of like how depth, how much depth there is in this game. Uh, but as you uh, build uh, your different uh, your different kind of buildings here, they really amplify your ability to kind of survive additional runs. Uh, you know, they give you potions. You can amplify the amount of potions you have in their healing effect through upgrades later on. Uh, you know, that's what the Herbless Hut does. The Smithy gives you tools so you can start with something in your runs. Uh, the Gymnasium is super valuable because it allows you to get the Village card, which is one of the most important sustain cards in the game. There's so much here. There's so much here. And really, like, the game just goes on and on and continues to evolve and impress as time goes on. But what you need to really understand is that you really want to build these with the resources you get and you don't want to die. If you think you're going to die on a run, you're best to uh, escape or retreat at the campfire, which is going to re which is going to basically save all your resources here. Or else, if you basically die, you only get 30% of your saved resources. If you uh, retreat not at the campfire, you get 60%. So in order to get 100% of those resources, you if you know you're not going to beat the boss, escape at your campfire and start building towards uh, building your base so you can be more prepared in future fights. Okay? Um, now. With that being said, each individual building can actually be upgraded. A lot of people don't realize this. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize that after you build something, many of these buildings can, in fact, be upgraded. For instance, the uh, the potion maker's hut uh, can be, which is the herbalist hut, can be upgraded uh, in order to basically increase the uh, potions effect and actually increase the number of potions you have as well. Then you have the smithy. Um, you know, when you uh, when you upgrade the smithy, you basically guarantee starting items for both uh, for all the classes instead of having like just generic items that might not fit your class um, you know you, uh, you can upgrade the uh, you know different places that like improve your campfires healing for instance so uh, then you can upgrade your the amount of uh, in the warehouse how many items you have available um, I know I'm going off on a whole bunch of things here but like really the game is incredibly complex when we talk about the actual uh, you know your your uh, camp supply we're talking about this here uh, basically what you have here is a number of open slots but it is limited and what you do is you basically assign all these uh, these kind of um, these items you find on your runs each one have different effects for instance one of the more valuable ones is the ability to increase the number of potions you have in your alchemist shelf uh, then you have the count's chair which increases your vampire which is basically a very important for sustain you have increased to armor you have retaliation you have the uh, increase to find rare items um, all these things and of course increased boss damage who doesn't love that at the end of the day you can craft these things as well um, and uh, so oops, wrong button you can craft these things as well by utilizing some of your resources that you've collected so for instance if I want to craft some food here I click this and I crafted some garlic which is two against all vampires if I craft this here I basically have crafted some uh, some shoe nails not bad okay so anyways um, you do want to uh, you know craft things here and there but you do find these regularly during your run so you don't have to worry too much about it uh, regardless um, you can also I should mention you can also uh, uh, dismantle as well so you can dismantle and get things back which is really valuable so if you know you're not using like if you don't care about these pebbles you can dismantle them and get some items back um, it's up to you it's up to you really and different different items give you different resources if you're short of specific things you can search for it the encyclopedia is uh, is kind of unlocked when you build uh, the library here and what it basically does is it allows you to um, actually sorry the Intel Center my bad the Intel the library upgrades the Intel Center but the Intel Center unlocks the encyclopedia and what the encyclopedia does is it gives you a lot of information about all the different uh, opponents that you'll come across it tells you what you get from killing them it tells you uh, the abilities that they have um, and when you first start your runs enemies won't have abilities they'll just hit you but as you increase in difficulty you unlock additional abilities that they'll they'll do on to you which basically makes the run significantly harder okay I'm going really fast I know there is so much to this game 
Um, and as you continue to build buildings, right, one thing I'll mention here is as you build buildings, they also unlock different items, right? So the encyclopedia, sorry, the, the Intel Center not only gives you the encyclopedia entries, but it also unlocks the desert and the sand uh, runes, uh, sand dunes, sorry. Uh, if you go to the crypt, right, the crypt will give you a whole new class necromancer, right? So a lot of people love that. If you really want to get to necromancer, you're going to want to rush cemetery into crypt so you can get the necromancer uh, class, right? But all these, like, the village cards unlock through Gymnasium. The Refuge unlocks Rogue. So right here on the left, you unlock your, your additional classes, right? Super valuable. Now, with regards to the cards themselves, if you go to Expedition, uh, so here are the multiple difficulties, right? So here's the first fight, which is the Lich. When you move to the next difficulty, right, you'll notice the difference. Chapter 1, enemies have 0 or 1 abilities, enemy strength negative 5, and they grow 2% per loop. And But here's the thing, maximum resource count, 10 so you can only carry 10 of each individual resource, so you can't just farm it like crazy. If you go to number 2, they have 1 or 2 abilities, so 1 guaranteed, some people have 2. They don't have a reduction in strength, and they're gaining additional strength at a faster rate per loop, which kind of amplifies things much faster, you get more resources, and you can, well, you get more, you can hold on to more as well in 20. Um, and you can also pick your classes here as well when you unlock them. Now, with regards to the actual deck building, um, you have a ton of different options. And uh, as you can see, you can kind of build as many cards as you want, really. Actually, you can. I should, I should clarify that. You really can. So it has to be, um, hold on, let me just take a couple cards off. It has to be less than uh, 15. So see, 16 cards, too many. And each one has a certain requirement as well. Like, you have to have one of these here. Okay, you have to have one of these here. Uh, you know, Oblivion is extremely useful if you're starting the game because it'll allow you to erase uh, tiles, which will allow you to weaken the Lich in the first run. I will be doing a full guide on that at some point as well. Um, and uh, as well, you can also, um, you fully customize it, right? And some classes will really require some abilities and others like for instance the desert the desert class um if you're building desert then you might want to reconsider going someone like the uh the rogue because you're gonna have almost no hp uh, as opposed you might want to go something with forests and uh, thickets because as the rogue you attack super 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 fast and you could do a ton of critical damage right if you're the uh the standard warrior you're gonna want to make sure you have meadows and rocks because what they'll allow you to do here is they will allow you to uh to basically get additional HP um, and then they'll light a heal additional HP at the end of every turn which gives you a lot of sustain a lot of survivability right so it, these these all depend on the different classes that you want to go with and I will be doing a guide on each individual class with example builds so keep an eye out for those as well uh, so those videos will be com coming out shortly anyways so, with that being said, if you're going to go on an expedition, it's important you design the cards based on what your character uh, is actually effectively good at. Uh, if you're completely new to the game, you won't be able to pick that because, well, you only got really one option, which is the warrior. So anyways, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to cut right to the, uh, the in-game uh, example here. If you have any questions, let me know. Let's get started. All right, guys, so I know I went really fast with that beginning section here, but now we're here where we're going to solidify everything with this first run. Now, this is a brand new game, just like you would start with for the first time. We can't build anything. We've got nothing built. We just got ourselves a campfire. We don't even have a field kitchen. We've got nothing. We're going to go right to Expedition here. All we have is the Warrior class here. Some people have abilities that are a little weak. We have the core cards that have been given to us, nothing else. I'm going to teach you how to use these cards and pilot them now. One thing I will warn you of. Okay, this is a roguelike game, and it is hard. Oh, and there's lots of text. I'm going to cut through it pretty fast here. Um, I don't, I'm, I'll let you read the, the story text. I'll cut through the text here just for the sake of saving time. But basically, the way the game works is, um, so you can right-click or hit spacebar to turn it on from adventure mode to pause mode. Okay, so you can pause and actually think, the, uh, think things through here. So we're going to add ourselves a ring. It adds vampirism, okay, and I'll discuss that stuff shortly. But what you'll notice here at the top... This is the day progress. So as you're moving along and fighting, uh, when you're moving, it moves faster because there, there is you can modify the speeds at which you kind of move around. Uh, doesn't affect the speed of the battle, just the speed at which you run around here. Um, so every single time there's a day, the day elapses. You get some healing from meadows, and uh, like different places will spawn things. Okay, so we'll add our shield and our sword here. Um, and so for instance, our meadow's going to heal us. Okay, 2 HP a day, so every time each metal we have will give us 2 HP. Spider cocoons will spawn a spider once a day. We'll just throw it there. Uh, we'll throw a beacon here. A beacon will increase movement speed. Look at that, perfect. We'll put it there, and we'll put a beacon here as well to help us move nice and quickly. Okay, we want to do as many loops as we can. We got meadows here, and we got groves. I'll throw a grove down as well. We'll put a grove here, and um, 
every two days, uh, a grove is going to create a rat wolf. So it's very important you understand. You don't want to just like throw everything out there as fast as you can because what's going to end up happening is you're going to ramp up your difficulty super, super fast and it might be a little hard. Now, we got a bunch of different cards here. Let me explain how they work. So Vampire Mansion, okay? Uh, Vampire Mansion, when you put it onto a spot, what it does is it basically creates a situation where anytime you have a fight with a vampire uh, within the vicinity of the vampire mansion, a vampire will be there. Vampire mansions also combo with villages, which I'll sh uh, talk to you about in a later video. You have meadows here. Now we're also gonna put uh, we're gonna put the mountain over here. We're gonna put a meadow right here. Now watch. One thing I'll show you. I'll put this here. So we have a meadow here, and as you can see, it's giving us two HP per day. But if I put a meadow beside any other building that's not another meadow, like for instance this cocoon here, you're gonna notice it becomes a blooming meadow, which does 3 HP per day. Remember that. So the combination for meadows here is, is anytime you place a meadow beside another building that's not a meadow, or another tile I should say, it basically gives you additional healing, okay? The Oblivion card is super valuable, don't waste it, hold on to it. The Oblivion ca uh, card is used to actually defeat the Lich later on. So this first boss run you fight against the Lich, or against we're gonna kinda cut through the, uh, the text there, I'll let you explore that on your own time. I don't wanna do, I don't wanna be spoilery here. Um, and uh, basically, this allows you to destroy the Lich's buildings, which will make the Lich weaker. So it's very important you hold on to the Oblivion card. It'll also allow you to delete um, sections of monsters that are too tough for you, okay? Okay, here's a great... Okay, I need to talk about this right now. There are four different rarities of items. There is common, which is basically gray. There is uncommon, which is blue. There is rare, that is yellow. And then the very rare, which is orange. Now the difference is as you move up in rarity, you get additional stat lines to each item. For instance, these are both level one rings, but because the, the very rare ring is a very rare ring, it gets four stat lines as opposed to just the vampirism. Okay, so we're gonna switch this and we're gonna take it. Now you'll notice we have multiple shields here. They all kind of do the same thing. Oh, we had armor. When did I pick that up? I didn't even notice the, the armor was there. Anyways, we're gonna put the rocks like this. Now we're gonna put them in a block of nine and I'll show you why momentarily. And this here I will put here for the actually I can put this on the inside there and again it's attached to the beacon so it gets the added benefit of healing and you can see we're getting eight healing per day which is not all that impressive I should mention uh, this is a really hard game do not expect to beat the boss in the first run it is a roguelike you have to build up towards it you have to upgrade buildings you have to do a ton of work before you can beat the first boss ah treasury nice so what we'll do is we'll put the treasury here the treasury is super valuable because it's gonna really gonna help you amp up the ability for you to basically uh, get some valuable items and build things faster so you always want to run the treasury while you're kind of uh early on in your experience in this game here so we'll check the item here this item does the same amount of damage rock we will put here the grove we can put a you know we can put a grove here we can put a grove there okay we're still going here we're still going now you'll see the different effects so because we're at a beacon we have 20 percent attack speed and we have the vampiric aura which all enemies are basically getting 10 percent lifesteal that's only for enemies, okay? So you can check up there to see what effects are being applied. If you want to see what... Uh, whoop, oh, we just got items here. So there's so there's a uh, level 2 rare as opposed to a level 1 very rare. Now the rule for this is... The kind of golden rule is go up one level, one down one rank. So for instance, I'll actually do this. Yes, it's this is a very rare and what I have now is a rare. But the level 2 supersedes the level 1. And we're really... Like I would not have replaced that with a level 2 blue item. But drop one rarity for one uh, one level. Now we have a ritual sword. It is a blue, so it has magic damage. As a, in addition to just straight up extra damage, we definitely take it as well. So you'll see the difference, right? That extra stat line is definitely worth it. Okay. The road lantern we can actually put here. Probably put here to reduce the number of spawning enemies in this general area here. Okay, we're going to keep running here. Okay, so... One thing I will mention as well is different types of shields and different types of armor, they focus on different types of attributes. So this type of shield, the round one, focuses on evasion, okay? And I will be doing a full guide on the different types of weapons and armor, like the actual physical styles of them. They all do different things. So I will be doing a full video on that to help you guys understand that, so keep an eye out for that as well. And look, once we place the meadow here, it gets, a di it, not only because does it become a blooming meadow, but we got additional resources. And when we complete the whole thing around it, we'll get even more resources. Resources. Okay, so let's keep going. We get our heal. We heal up when we move by the uh, the campfire there. Okay, we get another treasury. We can actually put it right here, 
And then we got another vampire mansion. Do I actually go all the way with these vampire mansions? It'll make the fights really hard here, but let's do it. And we'll take another grove. I might actually put the grove... I'll put this here. I don't want to put too many around the, the vampire mansion because the vampires can make things very difficult for us. Also, I will add that the way you get towards the boss is not just by running around looping over and over and over again. A lot of people seem to think that like, you got to loop non-stop to get to the boss. Uh, the way it works is with every single uh, tile you place, this meter goes up a little bit. Okay? And basically, oh, level 4. So as you see, it's a rare, so it has three stat lines, and it is way better than the level 2 um, uncommon we have. So now look, see... The vampire wasn't showing on the map, but there he is. And we're still pretty strong right now, which is good. Okay, we got another meadow. So we're going to put the meadow here, which is going to activate both of these. We'll put this uh, right there. So the mountains, the mountains uh, give you additional HP based on what's around them, as do the... Uh, so watch, the mountains will give you additional HP based on how many adjacent rocks there are. So mountains should generally be in the middle. Rocks will give you flat HP plus a small bonus to, uh, depending on what's around you. But I'll show you what happens in a sec. It doesn't. The first nine don't really matter, and I'll show you why in a moment. Okay, so we're going to get ourselves a heal here. Again, we're holding on to our uh, Oblivion card. We don't want to use that quite yet. I'm not re Again, I'm not replacing the level 4 axe with the level 3 sword. I'm leaving it. Okay, we're going to get this rock. We'll put it here. Because I'd rather have the uncommon versus the common for one level. If it's a level 5 Grey Axe, I replace it. But I'd rather have the uh, the added damage there. Another Cocoon. You know what? We don't have anything on this side. I'll throw, I'll throw this here. You know what? We'll heal here. We'll go. Okay. I'm starting to get a little hesitant to add too much more. I know we're weak. The, the major mistake that a lot of new players make is that they get really excited with like the idea of like, Oh, I'm playing a new game. I want to beat the boss in the first run. And they throw down like every single building. Oh, watch what happens, by the way. I put this rock down. This turns into a mountain. Okay, the mountain peak. So with any uh, combination of nine in a block, and you can only build one of these per run, uh, with any combination of nine of these uh, rocks and mountains, you get a giant, giant mountain right here. And you can basically now put this here so you get five... Uh, 5 HP per adjacent rock and mountain, and this will give you 5 per adjacent rock, rock and mountain as well. It also spawns a harpy every two days. You'll also notice that I placed my 10th tile of rock and mountain, which spawned a goblin camp. Goblins are super hard. So what that does is it offsets your ability. So I can just drop, I can drop these non-stop, non-stop. What would stop me? I just gained a, tons of health. Nothing could kill me. But the problem is, is that, um... You'd be in a situation where, well, you're going to have these tons of these goblin camps and they're going to kill you because they're way stronger than you are at this point. This is a brand new run. We have to really... Okay, see here? So this is a level 3 shield, but it's one rarity down, but it's a level 3. We replace it. Okay. Okay, we have rocks. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to do this. I'll put this here and I'm going to put the rock... Put the rock here, the mountain here, another mountain here. Okay, so we want to really amplify the amount of health we have, but as you can see, we're not healing very well. We don't have a lot of healing right now. Okay, so we have another beacon. We'll put a beacon here to make us run a little faster. Right there, across that strip there. We'll add another rock, put a mountain there. No more spider cocoons. We're going to hold on to that. Okay, no other items I want to replace. I'm not going to replace this uh, standard watch here. We're going to heal a little bit there. Harpy's coming in. And again, you can actually hover over them, and it'll actually give you stats. Okay. Okay, we got another mountain peak. Perfect. I want the mountain peak there. We got a meadow. I'm going to put... Uh, I, um, I'll actually put the meadow here. I should put it there, but I'll put it there. I want to show you what happens when you complete this here. Oh, we got goblins. They're yelling at each other. These guys are super strong. And the key thing is they're one of the only ones that has an ability, even at the first run. Uh, they're living. They have a soul. And if an ally dies, they get 30% extra damage. So watch what happens to him. He gets 30% extra damage. He's hitting way harder now. That's how they kill you. That's why they kill you. They do a ton of extra damage so fast. Oh, we got a huge, huge item there. Huge weapon. Okay. A rapier. It's a rare. Okay. A very rare story. So we get not only more damage, we get more defense, we get regen, and we get vampirism. Vampirism is basically you heal yourself with damage. So you do damage, you heal yourself for a percentage. Perfect. Okay. We got more meadows. I'll put them here. We're short one more meadow, and then I'll show you what this bad boy does right there. Now we'll be able to do a look at this. We're going to hit way harder now. We're basically two-shotting guys now. Good. we got a rock. I'll put the rock here. That's fine. We want to be around the first loop here. We want to be around this mountain peak. 
because it kind of gives us the most benefit. Okay, so this is a level 6 shield. Look at that. Okay, we replace it. Have to. We have to. Too much value in the defense. And you can see all our stats over here, okay? Another rock. We'll put the rock here at the top corner. Okay, we're going to get another thing here. Okay, level 6 armor. So we lose the damage to wall and the counter, which is basically like you get hit, you hit back type thing. But it's 200 HP extra. We take the 200 HP extra, okay? Again, sometimes the... Um, the the level will always supersede the rarity if it's like two or more if it's one it's not that big a deal keep the rarity like when you become more advanced like especially when you do like necro builds and rogue builds you're gonna want to like pick certain items and certain combinations as i mentioned before like some weapons have very specific characteristics axes are different than rapiers okay uh the different shields are, are provide different bonuses and i will be doing a complete guide on weapons and armor so keep an eye out for that okay watch this meadow we drop it watch what happens this thing gives you a ton of extra resources hell yeah that's what i'm talking about a ton of extra resources and but now it's going to spawn a gargoyle every three days so look that's why i haven't been dropping all these eh? the cemetery the spider cocoons because this drop now this is going to give me a gargoyle every three days this is going to be a harpy i keep dropping these i'm going to get these goblin camps now bear in mind if i don't like these goblin camps i can just delete them i can go like this and i can delete a goblin camp right I'm not going to do that right now. We have a level 5 ring. We definitely take it. A level 4 sword. We're not taking it. We're not going to replace that for the 6. We're going to keep going. Now, we have the road lanterns. We can actually use... You know what? I'm going to put a road lantern right here. We don't need too much. I'm going to throw this here. I could throw a graveyard down. I feel like I can... The problem is I'm eyeing our health here, and I can see that we're at about half health. And with every loop, the enemies get more difficult, right? And we get better items. But the enemies get more difficult. So I'm a little cognizant of that. Okay, there's another one. I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm oblivion this. All right? Plus, that's right at the end of the loop. So if I'm really short on health, I do not want a gobble camp there. Note the, the, the way we're moving, okay? Do I just drop... So now I know we can drop 10 more tiles, by the way. Okay, we drop a meadow here. Put the mountain here. That'll activate that as well. I'll drop a cemetery just so you can see what's up. So you can see the skeletons. The grove, I don't want another grove right now. We're going to hold on to this, the, the road lantern, for the time being. And as I said, you advance this bar by placing more things, okay? Ooh, that was a good kill there. And we're going to complete this. We're going to get all the extra items. Okay, perfect. Again, we want these items. This is how we build our base, okay? That's exactly how we build our base. And uh, I'm going to wait a second here. No, I'm going to put this here. I want the regen. We're so short on health, I want the regen. And we go. I'm not I'm not dropping anything else. I'm keeping on to these oblivions because they can save you. They can save you at the end of the game because what happens is, is when you use the oblivions, uh, you can clear the road of all enemies. So if, like, you're really close to being dead... Um, Okay. Oh, a couple things I need to mention here. Okay, good, good, good. See how this thing's glowing? See how this thing's glowing? What this basically tells me is that because it's glowing, it's because I'm right at the camp. Or just, but like, it, you can activate it just before, by the way. And if I retreat, like if I'm about to die, I can retreat and save all my items. If I, watch, watch this. So if I go past it and it turns off and I retreat but I'm still alive, I lose some of the things, I keep 60%. If I die in battle... I only get to keep 30%, okay? Now, one thing I mentioned here before is that different shields do different things. Like this shield right there with the skull on it, that's a vampirism shield. There are shields that, that specify vampirism, and different shields will offer different things. This is the attack speed shield. So, um, I that's more advanced, and as I said, I will cover that in an advanced guide as I... Um, as I continue to make content for this game, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, it's an amazing game, it's amazingly complex. I'm trying to talk as quickly and give you as much information as I can. I know I'm missing things because there's just so much to talk about, but I hope I'm making things a little more uh, understanding, uh, like kind of achievable for you guys. Now again, your goal, oh, okay. That's a good armor piece. We get additional vampirism. Okay, that's the vampirism armor piece. We get additional uh, health, it's a, a higher rarity, higher level, perfect. Okay, now, if we really want to stack vampirism, we can switch these two. But, I'm not going to yet, because I'd, I'd rather have the defense. It's double the defense. It's 8% vampirism, though. We're low on health. You know what? I'm going to swap them for now. Because we're low on health, I want to heal with every attack. 
but we don't do quite enough damage. Like we're doing, we're healing for eleven. They're hitting us for eight. So we're actually now that we have va vampirism stuff on. Okay, like we have the vampirism rapier, we have the shield and the armor. We don't have the ring, but we have the other things. We're actually healing up in battle here, which is going to help sustain us here. So we have a rock. I'll put a rock in this corner here. This should go here, and then a mountain should go there. The positioning is extremely important. Like, the way you actually lay out your map is super important. Okay, another beacon. We can actually put a beacon. You can put beacons over here as well if you want. I'm going to put this beacon right here to just speed up the, the rate at which we move here. This run's actually going pretty good here. And uh, as I said, definitely keep an eye out for all of my advanced guides. I will be doing guides for each individual class as well. Uh, I'm not going to lay another cemetery. I'm going to put this here. We're looking for another... Do I, put another, do I just throw another beacon down? I'm going to hold on to those beacons for a sec. But I'm doing uh, guides for each individual class, okay? So that will be coming, so keep an eye out for that. This is a big fight. These spiders, spiders get really hard really fast. We're actually taking a ton of damage here. Hold on, hold on. So I'm going to, we're going to, the shield has to go in. Level 514, we swap the shield. What's this doing for us? Defense. So we're not going to die here, but we took way too much damage. Way too much damage. So now what's going to happen, by the way, 13 cards is the maximum you can hold. Okay, this is the mountain. That's exactly what I wanted. Now that's more or less complete. And now we're, we don't need mountain cards anymore. I think we're going to stop there. Um, we got our harpy. Highly elusive. Took her down. We're not replacing anything yet. Rat wolf and a vampire. So they're healing up ever so slightly. Okay, now we have Meadows. So now we're at basically at a full hand here. If we get more cards, they're going to burn. But it's okay, because burning cards... The only problem is I don't want to burn an Oblivion. So I don't want to burn this Oblivion. So I'm actually going to drop this Meadow to avoid burning the Oblivion here. I'm going to do... I'm going to put it here, because I want to activate it. I don't want to... You burn the next card, right? So I don't want to burn my Oblivion. I have, I have another Oblivion back here, so it's okay. There's a Gargoyle. So they hit very, very hard. And at level 2, they actually resist incoming damage. Like, look, because of this gargoyle and this, like, I'm near death. Right? Guys, I'm not going to make it. So I'm not going to make it. Despite being someone who, like, really knows how to play here and I'm min-maxing everything I can, more or less, um, I'm still losing. So there goes the vampirism. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tell you exactly how you should play this. Okay? So in this situation... You know you're going to die. You're not going to get to the boss. You're not going to beat the boss. You're low health. You're not sustaining. You don't have enough buildings. You don't have enough items. It's the way it is. It's a roguelike. You have to you have to do multiple runs and slowly build a stronger base, right? Um, so with that being said, I need to get to this camp. Remember what I told you before? If I run away right now, I lose 60% of my stuff. Hell no. I need to build this base. I'm going to put the meadow here. I'm going to put the I'm going to hold the rock for a second. Um what am I going to do? I could actually, I can do a couple things. I can put lanterns here and it'll actually get rid of some of the, uh, the dudes there. I can actually use an oblivion. Watch this. So if I, if I, let's pretend I'm at one health and I think that's going to kill me. I can actually oblivion that and it'll actually erase the, uh, the creatures there. Okay. That's something you can do if you're really close to death, but we know we can't complete this run, unfortunately. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it to our campsite. Okay. And we're going to get the hell out of here. The reason why is because we want to upgrade our base and we want to go at it for the next run, right? Do not die. I'm telling you this right now. If you're new to this game, do not just... Don't throw your life away. Don't just throw your life away because it is way too valuable. So there we are. We're going to run away now. One thing I will mention... Okay, so this boss meter. So if I start laying things, watch how fast the boss meter starts to fill, right? So if I lay this beacon, I lay this... I'm just laying stuff for the sake of laying stuff, okay? You'll see that the boss meter is filling, Okay? Not that. No! Did I accidentally right-click? Oh, no. I'm an idiot. Okay, I accidentally right-clicked when I meant to... Oh, no! I moved out of the tile! No! Good job, Alex. Well done, bud. Well done. You did it. Absolutely embarrass yourself. Anyways, I just completely messed up. I'm not... Oh, that's so embarrassing. Anyways, this is why you got... Now I should... Like, oh, my God. What have I done? So now what I have to do is I'd have to run all the way through again. I won't. Okay, I'm just going to retreat... Oh, the shame. Anyways, that was an accident. While I was doing everything else just to show you what was going on, I accidentally right-clicked and therefore completely missed my thing. Anyways, it, whatever. You get it, right? Don't do not do what I did. Do as I say, not as I do. But anyways, as you can see, we go here. We don't have enough to build these things because I'm an idiot. But we can go and build a field kitchen. We pick a spot. We build a field kitchen. We talk to our chef here. And the nice thing about that 
is that we get another card and we get additional campfire healing power. So, and guess what? We can also upgrade it, again, if I wasn't an idiot and had some items, I could have upgraded and increased the amount of healing power that our uh, that our campfire had. And once again, what we can do is we can try and build more things in the future on future runs. We go here, we got ourselves a new item. The blood grove is uh, is kind of used with the grove here. We got a chrono crystal as well, it's too many cards. But when you build a grove, you can actually put a blood grove beside it. And I'll be doing a video completely explaining all of the different tile combinations as well because there's like a million of them and it's super confusing so look out for that as well anyways guys i hope you enjoyed this introduction this complete beginner's guide to loop hero check out the videos i have linked above we're gonna be doing a ton of guides on this game thank you so much for watching and a very special thank you to everyone who has subscribed take care everyone and have yourselves a wonderful day